is Wi-Fi as dangerous as cell phones? It seems like it wouldn't be since it's not near your body. Saying that is one more dangerous than the other is um, what I would say is they are all harmful to our health. All the current way we are rolling out wireless technology and technology is harmful. Be it Wi-Fi, be it cell phones. And by the way, your cell phone has Wi-Fi antennas on it. Wi-Fi is a very erratic signal. And even though it can measure much lower, uh, the signal is pulsing. And you imagine if you had a pane of glass and you were just pressing on it compared to if you were banging it. That's a different, the, these signals are coming at the cells in our body in an erratic fashion, pulsing. And the thing about Wi-Fi is that it really can be erratic in the way it goes up and down in terms of its pulsing to the body. When you measure it, it can be very low. Schools are measuring this radiation. Parents are raising the issue. Schools are measuring it. And they say, oh, it's so low. That radiation is so low. But there are studies showing Wi-Fi radiation impacts, um, testes development, um, cognition. Uh, so I don't, I don't really actually, when I'm talking about what changes we need to make, I don't differentiate between, oh, reduce your cell phone, but not the Wi-Fi. We, we, we need to reduce all of it, especially because we're exposed day and night for children bathed in schools and at home. It's not too hard to turn the Wi-Fi off at night as a first step. Do cell phone companies put a warning label on cell phones? <laughs> well, not in the United States, um, except for in Berkeley, where when you go to buy a cell phone, you're informed that phones emit radiation and that when they are touching the body, they can exceed our federal limits. Because the whole way we test phones is uh, doesn't even match how we use them. Phones are not tested touching the body. When they're tested touching the body, they can exceed even our limits, which are not even protective. And Berkeley was able to pass that several years ago. And it, uh, of course, immediately the wireless industry sued. It went all the way to the Supreme Court that upheld the California um, ruling. So not in Maryland are we getting warning labels. You think about tobacco. When did we get warning labels? I mean, we barely are being warned in the United States about tobacco. In other countries, they have far more in strong with visual pictures, whereas here in the United States, we have like a little sign that's small bit on the packaging that it's easy to dismiss. But that is something that people can advocate for is warning labels on phones especially in California or uh, in areas covered by this, the, that circuit court decision. The French did a test of 400 cell phones bought off the shelf. Nine out of 10 cell phones failed to pass the current European standards. Can you explain this in more detail? Well, that's a little bit of what I was talking about. So we, when cell phones came on the market um, in the 80s, people had holsters that phones were not carried in pockets. And the test has a distance. So in France, unbeknownst to the French people or the world, the French government uh, back in 212 started testing phones at body contact, in positions of body contact, like you would do if you put it in your bra or in your resting on your legs or on your chest, as you see people using phones all the time they found that the majority of those phones exceeded the EU limits. Um, uh, Dr. Mark Arazi, who, uh, who started the PhoneGate Association, which you can look up and learn all about, brought that to light by pressuring the government to release that data in full. And that took uh, litigation to raise awareness, um, and they ultimately have been posting that information. But what's really, um, striking is that if you take those, the French data, the numbers of the amount of radiation for each phone they did like all the popular models, Samsung, Apple, et cetera, and you convert it to the way we test phones in the United States, the excesses can be up to 11 times what our US limits are, 
when phones are on the body. And yet, our FCC is saying that they don't need to test phones on the body. They just issued a ruling December 219 that they do not need to test phones uh, in body contact. And they say that even if, even if there is excesses in the amount, that um, it doesn't harm health. Because the way our US government and most governments around the world look at this issue is if it doesn't heat you, it can't harm you. Because, of course, if you heat, I mean, cell phones and wireless devices emit microwave radiation. At high levels, it heats you. But heating is not the only effect of the, this, this uh, technology, these emissions. You recently said that the Cleveland Clinic has been warning its patients for years to keep phones out of their pockets if they want to have healthy babies. The same advice comes from the Mayo Clinic, and the reason is there's a recognition that cell phone radiation can damage testicular function. Please explain this in more detail. There's um, a, 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 a large body of evidence showing that um, sperm damage from cell phone radiation and uh, decreased um, viability of sperm. So the Cleveland Clinic has done its own research and they published on this. And so that's a recommendation. Keep your phone out of the pocket. If you want to have father healthy babies, you want to be more fertile, let's get that phone out of the pocket. Should we assume that all cell phones are properly tested for safety before we are allowed to purchase them and that if there was any risk to the public from wireless radiation, that we would be told. You know, I assume that too. I, when I first heard there might be an issue with the phone, I was like, "What? Cell phone radiation? What? What are you? What are you talking about?" I was, and then I thought, "Well, of course, cell phones are safe. Of course, they tested this for long-term safety. I mean, surely you would not market." a device to me and my kids if it weren't safe. But there was no pre-market safety testing for long-term exposure. They only tested the heat, you know, how much heat. And what they did is uh, the tests are really based on animals. And when they got so hot that they stopped, they had hungry rodents. When they stopped pressing a lever for food, they said, ah, that's the magic number. That, that's the heating. They decided that was the number, and that's the number we use now based on heating. It's just um, they didn't have studies on people who'd use cell phones for long term. They didn't look at a child's developing brain to see what would be the impact uh, prenatally. What's the impact to a one-year-old? I mean, kids' brains are rapidly developing. Their frontal lobe is developing. Their, my, their brains are myelinating. All of that is happening. What about the eyes? What about this radiation's impact to our eyes and all our the membranes in our body? Th that was not looked into. And there's, you know, there have been researchers that have been calling out this for, for decades now. And this is why we all have to get educated and organized and start talking about this, because there is a lot we can do.